All right, Nathan, I'm here ready to record the next trash video. Did you did you actually end up watching the movie I suggested? Uh, I'm choosing the next movie. Look, I would argue the point, but after watching this one, that's that's fair. Look, all jokes aside, what did you think of the movie Death Wish, Nathan? Ah, I mean, Death Kiss. I wish we were watching Death Wish. Any of the Death Wishes. Actually, anything else would have been better than this. I mean, I wouldn't blame anyone for thinking we watched Death Wish, the 1974 vigilante crime film classic starring Charles Bronson. Because let's be honest here, this looks like Death Wish at a glance. Yeah, it actually does. It's funny because my mum walked by when I was watching this and she's like, is that... Is that that Death Wish movie? I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. No, no, but it sure wants to be. We look a lot alike, but we are not alike. We're totally, totally different, different, identical twins. Look, let's not beat around the bush here, but the main actor of this movie looks a lot like Charles Bronson. You know, the famed actor who starred in Once Upon a Time in the West and Machine Gun Kelly. Please welcome back to the show, Machine Gun Kelly, everybody! But it's not Charles Bronson, it's actually someone called Robert Bronzy, you know, and that's suspiciously close to Bronson, if you ask me, which is a bit of a coincidence, eh? Hey? Is it is it a fake name? Or is that really his name? No, his last name's Kovacs. He was born in Hungary, which maybe explains why his line delivery is the way it is in this movie. Good tea. Thanks. So, Chris, how the hell did you actually find this movie? Look, I was doing a bit of a deep dive into what's now being called geezer teasers, which I'm not going to go on a rant about because there's a whole bunch of stuff already online about the topic. But essentially, geezer teasers are movies that star former big action names in cheap B-films. Yeah, that's right. Just dodgy action movies. And you know what's hilarious to me? The king of the geezer teaser was probably Bruce Willis before he retired recently. And what movie was he the main character in? Death Wish? <laughs> yeah, the recent Death Wish remake by Eli Roth, which... Let's be honest here, it wasn't great. Yeah, that was less Death Wish than this movie, if I'm honest. Oh, 100%, but it's a lot better than some of the other films he's been in lately. <laughs> Fuck shit up. Or not. But yeah, I somehow stumbled across this movie when researching geezer teasers and I just found it hilarious because it's essentially a geezer teaser for Charles Bronson, but it lacks the actual geezer because he's dead. Or he's not dead and he's just like an immortal and he comes back under a different name every now and then, but he keeps making the same film. That actually would have been a way more interesting movie. Oh my God, someone get Robert <laughs> Bronzy on the line. I really want to see that movie, eh? Hey? No, you don't. Lifeless eyes, black eyes, like a doll's eye. When he comes at you, doesn't seem to be living. I mean, clearly Robert Bronzy isn't a professional actor, so what do you think he was doing before this, name? He's like a Planet Hollywood as Charles Bronson. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you're not far off that, because according to the sources I can find online, he was actually a stuntman and Charles Bronson impersonator in Europe. Are you serious? Is that true? <laughs> Literally, the director saw this guy who used to be a Charles Bronson impersonator and went, I'm going to build entire movies around him playing Bronson, essentially. That's a terrible <laughs> idea. Oh, yeah, you end up with this. How much money you got? Six. Six dollars. Bullets. Yes, well, I suppose I walked right into that one. And in fact, you say he's a stuntman. He does no stunts. He just walks around and shoots people. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on, Nathan. He does fall over a couple of times, although it's not really the most impressive thing ever. Because he's an elderly man. <laughs> And I can get up! So seeing as he's being cast as a Bronson type character, who is he playing? I mean, I can only assume he's playing Charles Bronson from Death Wish and he's, you know, killing people to kind of clean up the streets after his family died because we don't get any backstory for the character in Death Kiss. We don't even get a name. He's just known as The Stranger. So it actually doesn't make sense unless you assume this is a direct sequel to Death Wish. 
It almost needs a summary at the beginning or something to explain everything. Yeah, exactly. Previously on Death Kiss. I mean, that would make the movie make a lot more sense, but I guess then the director would have to admit that he's taking more than just influence from a lot of Charles Bronson movies. If you know what I do, you'll never want to see me again. The first Death Wish is more focused on getting back for his family being killed and whatnot. But then by the time you get to, is it three or four? Oh, you don't even need to finish that train of thought. It's three. Three's the tipping point where it almost becomes a parody. I mean, they even started making video games. He's then stopping gangs in random cities, like, well, suburbs, but it's basically a whole city is run by a gang and he's just shooting everybody. And he's become like an Arnie sort of commando character that's an elderly man. Absolutely, which is why maybe this feels so much like a sequel to those movies rather than a standalone film. Because this is just scene after scene of our main character killing people. But it's way less fun than something like Death Wish 3. It's going for that grittier tone of the original and number two. The very start with the little girl and stuff, I was like, oh, okay, this is kind of not great already. Oh yeah, with the human trafficking and stuff. Uh, the moment that came up, I was like, oh, we're watching this kind of movie. Oh no. Because once you say something this pure, this young, you'll be ruined. How young? Too young. No, no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, 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 hell no, 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 I refuse, no, no. But then halfway through, you get your main bad guy, Nazi dude, and it's like, why don't they start with him and have him like running a, a gang or something? Yeah, yeah, and our main character has to go up against that gang and dismantle them piece by piece. But what do we get instead? A random guy robs a shop. He just goes and shoots him like, what? I don't even know who you are. Yeah, but that's essentially the whole movie. Like, he meets a random criminal, kills them, and then moves on. And we get to hear some music in the background that sounds a little bit like it was made with free loops found online. Well, at first, the opening set up shots and that are showing the city and that, and there's a, there's a cool sort of music over the top. I was like, oh yeah, this is pretty cool. Yeah, it's almost like a John Carpenter score or something. But then by the end, I was like, has the music gotten worse as this movie's gone on? Or am I imagining that? I wouldn't say worse, but it definitely starts to feel lazy, especially a little motif that appears in a later part of the movie that to me sounds so much like a, a musical cue from Pan's Labyrinth by Guillermo del Toro. <laughs> No one will know what that is. That movie had subtitles. No one's watched that. <laughs> no one who's watching Death Kiss is watching Pan's Labyrinth. It's their assumption. <laughs> but you know what the worst part of all is? I never learned to read. Look, honestly, every scene feels so disconnected from the last. I can only assume our main character is some kind of mystical force that just shows up whenever a bad guy is around and shoots them until they spray red jello from their bodies. Man, these people like pressurized water balloons. But the funny thing is I watched Django Unchained not that long ago, and that has ridiculous over top gore on that, but it just works. It's almost like it's made by an actual filmmaker. <laughs> Where in this, it's just like he randomly shoots someone, they explode. I mean, look, it's such a weird mix of tones because it's going for the dark gritty aesthetic and then some of the action and violence is just so over the top it's ludicrous like he has a scene where our main character punches a guy in the stomach so hard he busts the drugs he's hiding in there yet again random scene gets picked up the phone i'm at the airport okay goes there punches him walks off it seems like someone never really paid attention to he-man's advice eh? drugs don't make your problems go away they just create more in some ways, I feel like we're making this movie sound really awesome because it's nothing but full on action, but it's actually pretty bland. Like the action scenes aren't great. Yeah, and they don't look like they're in the same scene because uh, there's so many random cuts. He's shooting at different angles and he's next to things he wasn't next to before. And Look, I will give them a little bit of credit. They tried to do a first person shooter shot, kind of like the Doom movie with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Yeah, for the random first person shot. I was like, oh, that looked kind of cool. And I was like, 
<laughs> yeah, which is what, which is why it makes up like zero point zero zero one percent of this entire movie's runtime. I mean, in that same scene, he does use a door as a shield, which is like kind of comical looking. Against a dude with like a full submachine gun, and he's holding it up, and it's a door that's got no guts in it because it's probably too heavy to pick up. So it's just the thinnest bit of metal, <laughs> and he's holding it up I'm like he'd be Swiss cheese. <laughs> Look, a lot of this subpar action takes place in the high point of the movie, or should I say the low point, because it's here where we get a proper scene fleshing out some bad guys. How would you describe the characterization of these bad guys, Nathan? Tattoos and swearing. Fine racism. Fucking do it, Billy. Do it. Uh, we're being a fucking bitch and hit that motherfucker. Do it. To be blunt, I hated every scene involving these bad guys because they were just pure exploitation characters and not in a clever or kind of like satirical way. We weren't watching this movie together, but we did call each other up the next day and we both mentioned something about this point of the film. What did we say, Nate? We both turned it off after this scene. We're like, that's eh, enough of this movie for the day. <laughs> I was like, I turned it off like 45 minutes through after like, eh, those Nazis and stuff. You're like, yeah, me too. <laughs> like. At first I thought they were just bikers, but then they started saying some stuff that, uh, yeah, I can't really put it in this video for obvious reasons. Who, who is this guy anyway? Just some fucking ne necktie. Nectar. Nickel. Definitely an N-word. Oh man. Yeah, I was like, whoa, okay, yeah, they're bad guys, I get it. And they are bad guys, because they're doing some pretty terrible things to this kid who, you know, did something bad to their gang and is now trying to make up for it. Like, they actually trick him into killing someone, and who is it? He killed his dad, and you're like, okay. <laughs> and he's like, oh no, dad. Oh no, this character I don't know killed another character I don't know. Dad? No! Please, God, no! <laughs> But that's not the end of it either. What do they do to the guy next? Now I'm going to attack and rape your old lady and you watch. And then that's another thing that happens and you're like, this movie is awful. Yeah, it's horrible, but at least I thought it was setting up some kind of plot point. Like, I thought the guy was going to become, you know, a sidekick to the main character. Yeah, I thought the guy was going to team up with Budget Bronson and they'll go off as a duo then fighting crime. I mean, Budget Bronson does show up, but it's not a team up that happens. I know, he just shows up, says some random line and shoots him. Kill him, man! I don't know him. It means the whole scene is pretty much useless in the scheme of things. It's essentially just padding out the runtime. Yeah, speaking of padding out runtime, cut to the country, a girl in a wheelchair and her mum, and random things of money in their mailbox, and he's watching them through like a rifle scope, and you're like, what's going on? Yeah, th this is like a subplot that runs throughout the entire movie, and they use so much B-roll footage to plump out the film, including hilarious slow motion shots of the girl in a wheelchair, making it look like it's an ad for a few funeral home to me <laughs> she's just like staring out the window and then there's like shots of like crops real slow and then there's a dream sequence where she's like skipping through you know the slightly out of focus field and i'm like whoa calm down there terence malick like this isn't tree of life have you or someone you've known recently lost a loved one if so call us today on our toll-free number Look, the big twist of the movie is that our main character was involved in a shootout with a drug dealer who just happened to be the main neo-Nazi. And during that shootout, he accidentally paralyzed the little girl because her mother was there visiting to buy drugs. And now he feels so bad, he leaves bundles of cash for them. Well, the truth is, I was on my way to my dealer's house and I had Isabel with me because I was an irresponsible mother. My dealer was involved in a shootout with some people inside. A bullet went through the door. And hit my little girl in the spine. Yeah, but if you're going off, if you're going off of the themes of the movie beforehand, just the fact that she was at the drug place, he would have shot her anyway. But now he feels bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know why he feels guilty at all. Would have shot her, shot the kid. I'm sorry, I thought your child was buying drugs. Yeah. 
this is, was all made obvious in the last 10 minutes of the movie. And it's like, you should lead with this. Yeah, that's how you start the movie. Yeah. It's like at the end, they're like, oh, yeah, right. What was the reasoning for all this? Oh, let me write up something quick. <laughs> we'll film it at the end. I do love that he's like trying to help her, though. So he, he brings her a shotgun and we have a slow motion learn to shoot scene that looks like a bad film clip for some dad trying to enter hip hop. What happens with that shotgun that's introduced into the plot and we spend, you know, a two minute slow motion scene focusing on Nathan? What, what's the big payoff of that shotgun? There isn't one. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Screenwriting 101, people. He goes off into the snow to go after the bad dude and I don't think you see that lady again for the rest of the film, do you? Pretty much. I mean, we have one more scene with her and her daughter in their house, which... Speaking of, do you know why so much of this movie and pretty much every scene with the woman takes place in the same house? Because it was the director's? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> That's a running theme. That was yeah. the same thing for <laughs> yeah. Blood Harvest that we just watched before. Yeah, I didn't even have to phone a friend for that oh, one. Oh, God, I know. It, sometimes it makes me feel like I'm going crazy, like we're watching the same film over and over again. Are we, gonna have, are we ever going to watch anything worthwhile? Sadly, no. Oh. It's not the only location we spend far too much time in either. So much of this video is going to have to be the same footage reused throughout because literally a third of this film is a Baldwin brother sitting in a radio station. Do you know which Baldwin it is, Nathan? Uh, Billy? <laughs> no, I don't know the Baldwins, man. <laughs> So I know Alec, that's it. That's fair enough. And I mean, ultimately it doesn't matter because your brain is going to switch off in these scenes because they just go on for so long. It's someone ranting into a mic for minutes at a time. And I mean, he's really ranting. An eye for an eye isn't just revenge. It helps prevent future crimes. What if there was a champion for the innocent? Someone who took all the risk to keep us safe. Someone to deliver the kiss of death to the scumbags out there. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! But he starts going off on these, like, really weird tangents where he just, like, goes into this full bigoted rant at one stage, and I was like, whoa, <laughs> is this dude a good guy, a bad guy? Like, is he going to be shot at the end of the film? Is our hero going to walk in, just blow him away? Nope, he's a friend. He's another hero. Cops haven't grabbed you yet? Have something for me? It's only a matter of time before they catch us now. I don't care. We're doing God's work. Yeah, I thought this Baldwin character was almost satire at first, you know, of a political shock jock, but it soon becomes evident his pro-vigilante rants are supposed to be our opinion watching this movie, and we should be supporting the main character and what he's doing. He says what we're all thinking, and then the other guy goes out and does what we wish we could do. You're like, oh, God. I did a little digging, and I realised this perspective kind of lines up with the director's other films, and again, almost to the point of parody, like, I can't believe some of these are real. So, Chris, would you recommend the movie that you recommend I watch? I feel like you're leading me into a trap here because the answer... <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you've already recommended it. <laughs> well, 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 recommended it in the sense I thought it would make a good video because, I mean, the concept is interesting. Like, I'm sure if Charles Bronson was still alive, there'd be people out there trying to make Death Wish movies. Tonight, we review an ageing Charles Bronson in Death Wish 9. I wish I was dead. Hey. So the fact they're trying to make them without him is just, yeah, I don't know. I just find it so interesting. But look, it's it's not a great movie. I mean, it's probably barely considered a movie. <laughs> yeah. So, I, you know, I've got a feeling I know what you're going to say. But still, would, would you recommend this one, Nathan? No, but that's just because there's better action movies out there to watch and even better vigilante ones. I mean, I get it. It's funny. Just watch the, see if there's a supercut of the action scenes of him walking around a wreckage shooting people. Watch that bit. That's funny. Look, whether we recommend it or not, I know one thing for sure. We both deserve something for bringing this movie to the attention of the world. <laughs> What's that? We both deserve to die.